Once you have your HP Media Smart server connected, what you want to do is insert your software installation disk. Uh, if it doesn't auto start, all you need to do is open up my computer and right mouse click on the drive to autoplay. Once you've done that, run the exec file and it'll start up and you can start connecting to your HP Media Smart server. It will locate your server. Now, I have two servers on my network, so I will have a choice between my Hollis server, which is my existing server, or my HP server, which is the default name for the new server. I will choose that server name and click on Next. Okay, now that it's downloaded the software, all you need to do is accept the license agreement and click on Next. Now it's going to go through the Install Shield wizard and install what it needs to complete the connector. It takes usually about two to three minutes. Now it's going to walk us through the connector installation. Click on Next. You'll notice that it's also put the HP Media Smart icon on the desktop. This is a shortcut to be able to get to some of the different information about the server. Okay, now at this point we want to figure out what we're going to do. So we can either download the updates and install them automatically or let me download and install them myself. We're going to do it at this point. We're going to download and install them ourselves because I don't want to install Service Pack 3. Uh, this is the first time I've started up this server, but it was dated March of 09, so I'm thinking it's Power Pack 2. So we'll continue on. We'll click on Next. Yes, we want to wake this computer up. You should always do that. As you click on Next, it'll take you to the next step. Okay, now we're going to customize the server itself. So we're going to click on Next. And now what it's going to do is bring up the server screen. Let me move this over a little bit so we can get it in full picture. Okay, now this is where it takes a little while because it's actually going to initialize the server. Now this is the first time so it doesn't have to recover anything. Uh, the name of the server, I'm just going to leave it HP server for now. Now once you do this, it typically will be the name of the server forever. Um, I'm just going to leave mine HP server. It really doesn't matter unless you have more than one server. So I will leave it on HP server and click on next. I'm going to type in my password. Okay. Put in your password hint. Again, this is the first time we're setting this up, so this is the only time you actually have to enter in this information. You do want to have a strong password, so you want to have characters, letters, uh, maybe some symbols. Okay, now do we want to do the update automatically? At this point, I'm going to turn it off because I do not want to upgrade to Power Pack 3. I want to do this individually. So I'm going to go forward with this. Yes, I want to be a part of the Windows Home Server Customer Experience Improvement Program. Windows Error Reporting, click on Yes. These are, it's up to you if you want to do these things. Um, they don't collect any information and it's always good to help out the community. Okay, now it's going to go through and do the update. We're going to click on Next. And now we'll actually go through and install the updates. Okay, once you've gone onto the console, you'll know you're going to have to do some updates. So you can see here that this is quite a large update. So we're going to click on Next and we're going to let it go. It's one of the things when you're doing your setup for your first time is that it does these updates and it looks like it's stalled out and it's not going anywhere but because of the amount of space that it requires and the amount of download and your network speed 
it takes quite a bit of time to download. Now I'm downloading at 25 megabits per second um, typically with my charter package so it goes relatively quickly. Your speed may vary and the downloading may take a lot longer. Okay, now the download package updates have gone through, so now it's going to check the file and then it's going to do the install on it. So, again, things like this take a long time. You have to have a little bit of patience with it, especially if you're working with an older or a refurbished model like I am. Again, this is the EX485, so this is from March of last year um, that the software is set up. So, again, it takes a while to go through all of this. Okay, so it's going to go through and finish up the installation here, and we'll be right back after it's completed. Okay, it's going through and doing the preparation for install now. You can see that I've actually got the server home console up right now, and we're just going to go through and do the MediaSmart Server 2.5 update. So we'll go through and do this. And again, this typically would only happen if you're working on either a server recovery or if you buy a used or a refurbished MediaSmart server like I did. So as it goes through, it'll automatically update everything. Again, it takes a couple hours to go through and do this depending on your internet speed. Okay, the wizard has completed. We're going to click on finish. It's going to take a couple of minutes while it upgrades everything and we should be good to go. Okay, it's completed up. Good to go. Now it's going to reset the server right now, so we'll log back in. The 2.5 update has gone through. We're going to go to settings, and again, I've gone through the remote desktop at this point. I'm going to go to general, and you can see here that we have the Windows update off. Again, we were doing that so we could get the faster load. So we're going to click on on and then apply. And then if I go down to resources, you can actually see that I have my resource listed here. So I've done the remote desktop in, it's much easier to do it this way, and I'm in the home server console now. So if I go to settings, you can see that I've changed Windows Update to on now, and then we'll go through and get the update, and then as far as the resources, we can go through and work the resource issue also. So what I'm going to do is just take care of that, and then get everything else updated. Okay, and now with the Windows update, since I'm Service Pack 1, what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on Update Now, and it's going to automatically download and get the updates. It'll take just a minute for it to go through and recognize what Service Pack it's on, and then it will take a long time to download. Okay, it's downloading now. It's downloading Service Pack 2. So this is going to take quite some time for it to go through and download and install. Then it's going to go back and do Power Pack 3. Again, this is a refurbished EX485, so the software that was reinstalled with it was Service Pack 1. going through now and it's installing Power Pack 2. You can see update 3 of 8 as it's going through now. Now once this is done and after it gets adjusted and then reset and then rebooted, we'll actually go through and download the Service Pack 3. Okay, I'm not going to install Internet Explorer 8. I'll explain that a little bit later on. Uh, you don't need an Internet Explorer 8. Uh, 
And originally it had conflicted with the advanced admin console, so I've just kind of got used to not including Internet Explorer 8 on here. So if you click Don't Install, I'll show you later how to leave it off your install list. Okay, now that Service Pack 2 has installed and completed, now we just do a restart, and that will restart the server, and we'll be back in just a couple of minutes.